Hi there, welcome to this build of a 48 inch wingspan Tomboy Senior. Now if you've seen the previous videos, you know we've got the wing completed, uh, the fuselage in a pretty advanced state now, still things to do but pretty advanced, and got the tail assembly finished in the last video using really really nice light balsa. There's hardly any weight to this, it's just over about 20 grams. Now, in this video, what I want to be doing is, let's just put that on there, what I want to be doing is doing the hinges, I shall take this off again now, <laughs> I want to be doing the hinges for the rudder and also for the elevator. And I'm going to be using mylar, so thin plastic hinges. And I want to be really careful that I have as little friction or as little, it's not really friction, as little pressure needed to operate those control surfaces. So I'm going to be putting in quite thin hinges. So I'm going to get those hinges done first. I'm then going to finish off the profiling on most of this, but not this leading edge. I won't do that until I've got the fitment right so I know where the ball nose starts and stops. But I'll get the, uh, the trailing edge done on the, on the rudder and, um, and the ball nose on the front of the fin. Now once I've done that, I want to be able to fit the sub-rudder or the key, uh, keel sorry, and I just need to do a little bit of sheeting underside, a slot, cut this to fit properly into the slot, get that way, so that once this is covered, which I'll cover separately and fuse it separately, I can then glue that into place. It'll be a lot simpler doing it that way than trying to cover the whole lot together, but I need to prepare for that. And the other thing I need to do, which is, I think is really critical, is in a similar way to the, the keel or the subreader, I need to fit this tail assembly. This, this is, still isn't glued in here, it'll just pull out. But I need to put a little bit of sheeting on the top. I need to put a slot in there for the underside of this where the fin sticks down. You can just see that. Where the fin sticks down and so that slots in. And I want to get this so it fits positively and accurately and that's really important because I want to be able to and this will be the, the probably one of the subsequent videos I'm not sure if it's going to be the next one I need to fit the servos and the control uh, linkages and I want to be able to fit this securely and accurately so that it, it is stays where it is while I'm fitting the control linkages I want to then be able to take it off, I want to cover it, cover the fuselage, then be able to stick this into place afterwards. But I need it to be really accurate to get it in exactly the same place so that all of these linkages or the linkages line up exactly where they, they need to, to get that smooth uh, operation of the control surfaces. I don't want to glue this into place first and then do the control linkages. So this needs to be a really positive, accurate fit. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get those mylar hinges done and I'm not going to glue them in. I won't do that until I've actually covered the surfaces. That'll be one of the very last things I do when I'm setting it up. But I want to get the slots in and make sure that it's a good, uh, good operation. So. I'll move the camera around now and I'll show you how I'm going to do that. Right, well I've got the fin and the rudder here and you can see I've done no profiling to this edge which will need a 45 put on it at some point to allow it to, to turn and I haven't done any of the, uh, the profiling on the back. I just find it much better to do the hinges like this because if I profile that and put the 45s on it, it's harder to find the centre line. So I'd much rather get the hinges done and then profile it. Now if we put these together so we've got the nice curve at the top here and I've just put a little bit of a mark here where I'm going to put the two hinges. I think two hinges will be sufficient. This one nice and close down the bottom to where the uh, control horn is going to be. Now I've then transferred that across. J just a word on what I'm going to do with the hinges 
I've got these mylar hinges which I got from World Models and they're quite broad and they've got a, a wicking slot down the middle so that when you put them in you can just wick some of the CA in so you CA these in but what I've done because these these are quite um, resistant on small planes and uh, I, I don't really want to use them full so I've cut you can see here I've cut them in half and I've just cut the corners off where the cut was and so now I've got half sized hinges and that will be much better, le much less uh, resistance to, uh, to movement. So I've just drawn on where those are going to come across on that uh, surface that's going to be hinged. I've done a centre line and I've also done the same here. Now I haven't actually transferred across where the hinges are going to go. Let me do that quickly. And then the next job is for me to just put the slot in to accept the hinges. Now these hinges will probably go in all of the way and probably st even stick out the back here. Doesn't matter. And, uh, and then a fair way in there. And I'm going to use a scalpel and this is just my number three, Swan Morton number three with a number 11 blade, a nice long blade and it's nice and sharp. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go on that centre line and I'm just going to start the slot very lightly and just keep working it down nice and gentle. Now at some point I'm meeting this grain here and where it's been CA'd which will probably make it a little bit harder but this is a nice sharp blade so it should be easy enough. Oh I can feel it now, I can feel that just touching where it's been CA'd. Now that is probably enough There we go, and we can use one of these just to get an idea of the depth of that. So it goes in the, the full depth of that, uh, that uh, upright piece of, of balsa there. So what I'm going to do now, I'll probably do it a little bit more. Right, and now I'm going to do the bottom hinge and I'll do exactly the same technique. Just a very gentle cut, a little bit at a time. I mean you can do this different ways but I just prefer to do it by eye. I find I get good results doing it that way. Alright, now that should push in enough and it might be that when we get these together we see we need a little bit more. No, that's fine. Oops, there we go. So that'll be fine and when this is chamfered at 45 degrees that will allow that to turn as we need. Now, I'm going to get on and do the rest of the hinge or the other hinge in the fin and rudder and then I'm going to move on to the uh, the tail plane and just move that aside get these hinges out of the way and we've got the elevator and I, I kind of undernard about how many hinges to actually put into this and I think I've decided I'm going to put six again using these half hinges and I'm going to put one fairly close to the edge, outside edge. I'm going to put one fairly close to the rudder, either side. And then another one on the outside edge here. And then one midway between these two. Now the reason I'm putting these fairly close in here is because I'm going to have a control horn 
either side of the, the fin. If you remember, the fin just sits, uh, let's, yeah, sits in there like that S uh, with the rudder on the back. And we're going to have the control horn sticking out here somewhere. Sorry, we're going to have the control horn here on the elevator somewhere, either that side or that side. And so it'd be nice if it's hinged right by where that control horn is going, just so it gives it a bit of rigidity. So I will get on now, mark these out and get all of these done. And then I can start profiling this. Right, well, I've now got these nicely hinged, uh, the tailplane and the elevator as well. I didn't actually like the resistance once I'd got all six of these hinges in. And so what I've done is I've just trimmed them down a little bit. You can see how much I've cut off each one here. And that's just re reduced the, uh, the resistance. If I pull it out a bit, you can see how, uh, how thick they are. And I might even trim down some of these just a little bit more because these are quite strong hinges quite thick and you know this isn't a patterns model or a high performance you know it's it's a, it's a vintage model and i think these hinges even if trimmed down will be strong enough and having that just that little bit less resistance on this movement will will be a benefit so i think i'll probably do that right now i'm going to get these uh, uh, shaped up profiled and then I will get on to fitting the uh, the key or the subreader to the uh, fuselage. Well I've been cracking on with this tailplane assembly now and uh, I've got the the fin and the rudder all nicely profiled lovely smooth lines and you can see I've got a taper hopefully you can see that on the uh, on the fin there and I've also trimmed this bottom edge here because we've got to make sure that there's a gap there that clears these, these ribs and also this lowest point here needs to clear the covering as it comes round. So, but that's all done nicely now and I've, I've trimmed this here to allow the movement of the elevator. When I first did this, it, when you lifted the elevator up like that, it wasn't parallel that cut. So I've just trimmed that so it looks parallel if you can see. It just looks a lot neater. I've also done the tips and, uh, and, and just put a little bit of a bull nose on the back of this elevator. Just to make that kind of blend in and, uh, and look right. Now I've fitted this as well so it's a lot better fit to the actual tailplane. The tailplane itself will need a, a little bit of a sand and I still need to do this ball nose. I've said that before, but I'm going to wait till I've got it fitted onto the actual tail of the, the plane itself. But I'm, I'm really pleased with how that's looking and plenty of movement, nice and free. The elevator's still a little bit stiff with these six hinges. I might thin down, I, I'd probably leave the outer ones the same thickness, but I might just trim down some of these so there's a little bit less resistance. I mean, it's not bad, but um, the lighter we can make that, the better. So the next thing I'm going to be doing is working on just fitting this keel. And to that end, I've just infilled the, uh, this is the underside, we can see there, look. I've just filled in that with some 116 sheeting to keep it nice and light. And what I'm going to do now is if I get my ruler, oops, I'm going to put a centre line and I'm going to use a long ruler rather than just measuring across here and finding a centre line. I'm going to take a ruler right to the very front and measure the centre line at the front just to make sure this keel is, is dead uh, in line uh, or, or dead straight down the fuselage, should I say. And once I've done that, I can then trim this up, I think there's some needs to come off the front there and I'm going to put a slot, a couple of slots in this sheeting and trim out some of this so there's a tab going down and it will just slot in but we'll, we'll come back and have a look at that once I've done it. Uh, just one thing that occurs to me that I should say is when you're profiling a fin like this whether it's the bull nose or taking the, uh, the, the rear of the fin down to a nice, a nice taper 
Always put a centre line. I think you can probably see my centre line on there, perhaps. If you've got a centre line, you've got something to work to, and you're not going to take off more on one side than the other. Or, and if you do, you can always see that. So what I'm going to do now is get this keel fitted, this sub rudder, and then we'll come back and have a quick look at that. And I might also just put a couple of blocks in here just to give something for that more purchase when I actually glue that into place. But I'll, I'll see how that goes when I'm fitting it. I'm then going to sheet this in and we'll need to do a similar kind of affair with a slot in the top there so that that fits in nice and, nice and snug. And then, as I said previously, we've got, if I can just lift this over for the camera, we've got the, let me just move that a bit more, got the clearance there for the up elevator, but we haven't got any clearance for the down elevator. So I'm gonna to need to trim that, uh, trim the top of the fuselage there, put an angle on it so that the elevator will, uh, will go down. Whoops. So I'll get on now and we'll come back and have a look at that when we're done. Okay, so a very quick update of where we are. I've now got the keel located or the sub rudder located in a slot there and just got a couple of tabs that fit into a slot and I've left this quite long here because I didn't want to cut out a section coming along here and then make this really thin so I've, I've done that to cut out as far back as possible and that's nicely in line now dead straight so it's, it's not going to act as a as a rudder or anything when we're in flight and uh, that's a quite a nice snug fit and if we look on the inside if I just turn this round you can see perhaps just there I've put some um, 330 second balsa either side of the slot just a couple of little pieces just to give that a little bit more rigidity and it's surprising the difference it made but it's also a bigger gluing surface area which uh, will, will certainly help. Now, I've marked out, let me just get the fin, if I take the fin off here. I've marked out now the center line here. It's a little bit faint. And the bits that need to come out to allow the fin to sit down there, nice and, uh, nice and secure. So I'll cut those, cut those out now and then this should be fitted quite nice. Once I've got this fitted on there, those slots, and we can slot that in, I need to make sure that actually it's not cocked over. I need to make sure it's nice and parallel with the wings at the front. But that'll be the very last thing we do. Right, well I've now got the tailplane and fin really quite securely held there along with this uh, keel subrudder. And that will only fit really precisely in one location and it won't move at all. It doesn't, it's got no give. It's a really nice precision fit. And you can see it's level, the tailplane is level with the main wings, which is great. So all we need to do once this is covered is glue this in position. But as I said earlier, the reason I wanted to get this fitted like this is because one of the next jobs is to get those servos in and get those control linkages in. We shall then take out and do the covering and I want to be able to put the tailplane glued in position and make sure it's precisely in the right place so that those control linkages line up. Now thinking about what is going to be the next uh, step in this build I'm going to draw this video to a close, but thinking about the next few videos, I, before I put the radio gear in, I want to mock it up and I want to work out where the CG is naturally falling. So I know whether I need to put the battery and the servos towards the front to get a little bit more nose weight or even towards the back to get a little bit of tail weight. But it's really critical if we're not going to add any weight at the end of the build to compensate that we do that exercise and we work out the natural CG of the plane. 
But what I'm going to do, I'm going to do one step before I work out that natural CG, is I'm going to take off the fin and rudder. And let me just show you, because I just realised I haven't shown you the, uh, the slots I've put in. Just really simple sheeting and slots. And uh, it's the underside. So, before I work out what that natural CG is, I'm actually going to cover the tail plane and the fin. There's nothing stopping me covering these now bar that ball nose and just giving this a final sort of tidy up, just a nice fine sand. So I think in the next video I'm going to be covering these and I'm also going to be covering the, the wing. I mean it might take two videos, I might split it into two, so the tail plane and the fin and the wing. I'm going to cover the wing because at the end of the day there's nothing to be done to this now other than finishing. And if I put the wing on with the covering, I put the tail plane and the fin on with the covering, it's going to give me a more accurate idea of where the natural CG is going to fall. Yes, the covering on the fuselage could make a little bit of difference, probably will, because there's going to be more of it back here than there is up the front. But I'll get as much done as I can with that covering, and then we can find the natural CG, we can work out where the radio gear is going, we'll put the radio gear in and then we'll take it out, we've got it and we know where it's going to go, we'll take it out and then we'll cover the fuselage, put the radio gear in and we're done. So that's my, that's my train of thought and the best way to do this. It's, it's, in my mind it's really critical with, with a plane that we don't add any weight if we can avoid it. As I've said before, David Boddington when he did the plans for the Tomboy Senior he said that he got it at uh, 850 grams and he ended up having to add nose weight to, uh, to get it to balance because the tail ends up naturally heavy. But I have used really light bolsters, so fingers crossed. So anyway, I hope you found this video useful and interesting and I'm going to draw it to a close now. But thanks very much for watching and please come back and find out how we get on in the next the subsequent videos building this lovely 48-inch wingspan Tomboy Senior.